Okay, we're going to solve compound equalities. A compound equality is of this form. A is less than B is less than C. Now those could be greater than, both greater than, or they could be a less than and a less than or equal, etc. But that's the basic look. And A is less than B is less than C actually means the same thing as A is less than B and B is less than C. But if that's true, then that means A is less than C. For instance, it's like saying an, if Ann is shorter than Barry, and Barry is shorter than Cindy, then Ann is shorter than Cindy. All right, so first of all, we've got to make sure if we're looking at a compound inequality that it makes sense. So this first one, negative 1 is less than 2 is less than 5, makes sense since it's true that 1 is less than 2, and 2 is less than 5, and negative 1 is less than 5 as well. But the second one, 5 is less than 8 is less than 1, that does not make sense. The reason is because 8 is less than 1 does not make sense right here. And also 5 is less than 1 does not make sense. So there's no solution to this one. If you were, if there was an x in here someplace, the answer would be no solution, by the way. So it's, you're really not solving here. All right, let's look at the, the next one. 6 is less than x is less than 8. That makes sense because saying 6 is less than some number and that other number is less than 8. So one possibility is 7, of course. Um, if you were going to write this in interval notation, it would mean that the smallest number is just above 6, so it goes in between 6 and 8, so we're going to use parentheses. And if we were going to graph that, if this is where 6 is and this is where 8 is, then remember you put parentheses and in between. Okay, how about 4 is less than x is less than 1? That's the one that does not make any sense. And the problem is right here. 4 is less than 1 does not make any sense. So if you are trying to solve this, there's actually no solution. So this is a way of writing no solution, or you could just write no solution. If you were going to graph it, there would be nothing on that graph filled in. So the first thing we have to do in, when we solve a compound inequality is to make sure that it's possible to get a solution. So always make sure that the, if it's a less than, that the smaller number is all the way on the left and the larger numbers are on the right. If it was the other way around, um, I like to always write it with using less than symbols, but if you had something like this, 8 is greater than 2x minus 1, which is greater than, let's say, 5, that's okay because this now would have to be true that 8 is bigger than 5. That can be written, if you read it from right to left, as 5 is less than 2x minus 1 is less than 8. And I prefer to write it this way because it's easier to write the answer in interval notation or on a graph. All right, so now we're going to try some problems. All right, we're going to start with these two. Negative 2 is less than or equal to 3x minus 7 is less than 9. First of all, make sure that they're both less than or less than or equal, right? They can't, you can't have one of them be less than and the other one be greater than, for instance. All right, and then the other thing we want to make sure is look at this first number. The negative 2 is on the left and the 9 is on, all the way on the right. Make sure that negative 2 is less than 9. And it is, so now we're going to go about solving this. So what we could do is solve this compound one all at once. So we're going to focus on the inside, the 3x minus 7, and we're trying to solve for x. So we want to isolate the x. So we're going to add 7, but there's really three parts here, so we have to add 7 to all three parts. This is a shortcut to writing two separate inequalities. So negative 2 plus 7 is 5. And so we have, and then 3x minus 7 plus 7 is 3x, and 9 plus 7 is 16. Make sure you're keeping, if the first inequality is a less than or equal, the second one is just a less than. And now we're going to divide both sides by 3, because we're still trying to isolate the x. And that will give us 5 thirds is less than or equal to x 
is less than 16 thirds. All right, I make sure that my fractions are reduced. You don't need to change them to mixed numbers. And I also make sure the number on the left is smaller than the number on the right. 5 thirds is less than 16 thirds, so it looks like that would be the correct solution. So in interval notation, that would be 5 thirds. We'd use the bracket because of the equal sign here. And going up to 16 thirds. And if we we're going to write that on a graph, we'll say, well, let's just say that's 5 thirds and that's 16 thirds. Then looks almost the same as interval notation. So that's why I like to do the less than, right? It, less than, I always have my answer in interval notation look almost the same as the graph and almost the same as the original inequality right there. You can check, you know, a checkpoint to make sure some number in here works. Like for instance, if it's between 5 thirds and 16 thirds, 9 thirds, or 3 is a possible solution for x. So you could always check that x equals 3 is a uh, makes this true. So if I take the original and I'm putting in 3 for x, and I want to make sure this gives us a true inequality, negative 2 is less than or equal to 9 minus 7 is positive 2, and so it does seem to be in the right interval. All right, let's look at the second one here. We have 8 is less than 2x plus 1 is less than 5. So we're going to do the same thing we're going to see if it even makes sense. All right, so I've got 8 is less than 5. Ah, that doesn't make sense. So no solution, and you're done. Don't even start. In other words, there would be no point to subtracting 1 from all three parts and then dividing by 2 because there is not going to be any solution. You could just, like, randomly try a bunch of values for x, and you'll see nothing is ever going to work. All right, we're going to try one more type of problem. All right, here's one more problem. First, you want to make sure if this makes sense, and we do have the, very, the number on the left is a 1, number on the right is 7, 1 is less than 7, so we're good to go. All right, so this one we have to be careful because in the middle, notice I have a minus in front of that 2x. Just keep that in mind. All right, so we're going to try to isolate x from the middle. So I want to subtract 5 from both sides, and I'm I'm sorry, from all three parts. And so what do we have? 1 minus 5 is negative 4. And that'll just give me a negative 2x. And this will give me less than or equal to 2. All right, now I've got a negative 2x in the middle, so I'm going to have to divide by negative 2. But remember, any time you divide an inequality by a negative, you need to switch the inequality signs. So if I divide this by a negative 2, I have to change that, and it's becoming, going to become a greater than. That will then become a greater than or equal. And then I have to, of course, divide all three parts by that negative 2. So what does this give me? It gives me 2. Negative 4 divided by negative 2 is 2. And this is now greater than. And this is an x, and this is greater than or equal to negative 1. Now, notice I've got greater than instead of less than. I'm going to read it from right to left, which is negative 1 is less than or equal to x is less than 2. So that's the same thing as saying 2 is bigger than x, which is bigger than negative 1. That makes sense because 2 is bigger than negative 1, but it also makes sense to say that negative 1 is smaller than positive 2. So in interval notation, that means I've got negative 1 to 2. And if I were to graph this, let's see here, 0, negative 1, 1, 2, and 3. So it's going to go in between negative 1 and 2. There's that problem.